Hello, and welcome to my Bar Mitzvah project. I am Benji Elkins, and I am deeply proud and honored to have made a film about Dr. George Horner, a Holocaust survivor who survived three Nazi concentration camps, Terezin, Auschwitz, and Buchenwald. My name is George J. Horner, H-O-R-N-E-R. I was born in Czechoslovakia, in one of the smaller cities, Przerov. Don't try to pronounce it. <laughs> okay. It's Przerov. I decided to choose this as my bar mitzvah project when my cousin told me that Dr. Horner, one of his accounting clients, was a Holocaust survivor and a musician. My cousin thought it would be a great idea for Dr. Horner to perform a piano recital for my family. I then thought it would also be a great opportunity to interview Dr. Horner about his Holocaust experiences. And so I booked a date at my grandmother's apartment to begin filming my new bar mitzvah project. The first person to arrive on the set was Rabbi Israel. He is in charge of the bar mitzvah project program at our synagogue. So you excited for this morning? Yeah, I'm very excited. I can't wait for Dr. Horner to come here. It's really incredible. I'm, I'm really looking forward to meeting him as well. I've read a lot about him and I've seen actually a documentary about some work that he had done, mm -hmm. but uh, I've never met him. Me neither. I'm really excited now. Well, this is great. This is and so great. the bar mitzvah project helps our students as they prepare for their bar and bat mitzvah and prepare for adulthood in the Jewish community to think about something that they would like to be involved with in a personal way. This is unique as far as any bar mitzvah project that I have ever heard and I use the word unique uh, only when it's truly called for which means one of a kind the first time that I've ever seen anything like this. Then the rest of my family arrived on the set. And last but not least, Dr. Horner arrived with my cousin. Right in here. Hello. Right over here. And uh, this is the bar mitzvah boy, Benji. Hi. Oh, Thank nice you so to much meet for coming. You. I am delighted to meet you. I can't wait to hear you play. Okay. And Benji's done a lot of research about you. Mm -hmm. I, can't wait I found out that Dr. Horner was an ordinary kid, just like me. And also, he studied the piano as a child, just like me. When you were a kid in Czechoslovakia, did you go to school? Yes, not very enthusiastically, but I went, was going to school. I always felt that it interferes with my activities, like football and, and ping pong and things like that. So how old were you when you learned to play the piano and who taught you? Well, there is a story to it. Uh, my mother was an excellent pianist and uh, uh, she loved music, of course, and took me always when she went to an opera and they played the Mozart's uh, magic flute. And I liked it so much that when we came home, I tried to play it, of course, I didn't succeed, but what happened was that my mother and my father were in the door and she decided that obviously uh, there must be some talent in me. So they uh, hired a teacher, but after two years, she told my mother and father, she taught me all she knows, mm -hmm. and she said, I, should, I need some higher education in the music. I am Benji Elkins. I'm very proud and honored to have Dr. George Horner with us today. Dr. George Horner was a Holocaust survivor, or is a Holocaust survivor, who survived three concentration camps, Terezin, Auschwitz, and Buchenwald. Dr. Horner will now play for us some selections on the piano. The first selection he will be playing is a Terezin March. It was composed by Dr. Horner's friend Karl Schwenk. However, Karl Schwenk sadly did not survive the Holocaust. Now we will hear Dr. Horner play.
So did you find a new teacher? Yes, there was a gentleman called Karel Masik, who was a director of conservatory in Russia. But he came back to Przerov and opened a musical school and was with him. He was a very good teacher, but he was very fussy. So that was how it was. And the eighth year, Hitler came and, and the occupation of Czechoslovakia. And that was the end of, of my piano career, so to speak. Then out of a side street into Stepanska Avenue swings a Czech army truck. Loudspeaker mounted in its body. People of Czechoslovakia, at six o'clock this morning, German soldiers will enter our native land. These soldiers will enter Prague. They will occupy our nation. Our army will not resist. Civilians can best serve our people by following the army's example. Do not resist. When you were sent to Terezin, did you know what was? Did you know that you were being sent to a concentration camp? Or? Oh yes, mm -hmm. there was no doubt about it. And uh, actually, I was also aware that sooner or later, I am going to be sent to another one, or, or, a worse one, because uh, Terezin was only a collection concentration camp. Um. At Terezin, what was your life like there? Was it a hard life living in Terezin? Well, physically speaking, talking about beating and stuff like that, it was very little in, in Terezin. That came later on, you know. Um, did music play a big part in the life in Terezin? In mine? In everyone's in Terezin. Well, you know, Terezin had a very nice group of musicians which, who were famous and I was lucky enough to join them and, and, and be with them and learn quite a bit from them. That was the clever thing they did, you know. And also they want to show to the world that how nicely they actually handled the Jews. They was all fake, you know? Mm -hmm. Because the plan was all done that all these people should be dead. When you were being moved to Auschwitz, how did you feel? And did you know it existed? That was a very, very bad feeling because the first thing when we arrived to Auschwitz, my father was taken and thrown into the gas chamber where he was killed, you know. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Sorry. Uh. Auschwitz was brutal with constant beatings and shootings and very little food, if any. Dr. Horner realized that if he was to survive, he had to escape. But Auschwitz was so well guarded that escape seemed impossible. Dr. Horner vowed to God that if he was able to survive, he would devote his life to helping other people. The very next day, Dr. Horner went into the morning lineup and a Nazi guard asked if anybody was a woder. He did not understand the word for welder in German, but he realized it was a chance to get out of Auschwitz, so he raised his hand and was selected along with two other people. They were taken to the Messerschmitt aircraft factory near Kassel, Germany. George was safe for a while. Then, a group of Nazis came to the factory and said that the airplanes from this factory all had faulty landing gear, and someone here was sabotaging the planes. So the Nazis lined up all the workers on the wall and told them that they had to rat out which one was a saboteur. However, the workers would not tell. Then the Nazis beat up all the workers and one threw Dr. Horner to the ground and jumped on him, breaking his back. They said, then, well, we give you another 10 seconds if you don't tell you are dead. 
and, and lined up the soldiers with rifles. And he said, you are all going to be shot. And the guy from, from the center said that nothing should be done because there wouldn't be enough people to produce the aeroplane. So that was another of several uh, instances when I was looking death in the eyes, so to speak. So I was again alive. Um, how did you arrive at Buchenwald? By foot. Because the uh, uh, American army was coming very close to this factory. And they didn't want to be caught or anything. So they wanted to put us all into Buchenwald to continue the, their fun, you know. We were, it was called a, a march of deaths. And it was a very good, uh, a very explicit uh, name because about only 50% came back, uh, came to, uh, to Buchwald alive. It took 11 days we were outside, we never go anywhere inside. We get, got very little to eat. I remember still today that I ate uh, 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 rotten potatoes I uh, found on the ground and uh, drank from the puddle. If I, had a, if I was thirsty, if someone was slowing down, so they shot them. Some people were waiting and screaming at us and spitting at us and throwing stone at us. And someone come to the Nazis and ask whether they can uh, shoot one or two Jews. So they lend him the revolver and they, they shoot them. I had a sister who was one year uh, younger than I am. She was unfortunately uh, done, done in by the Nazis about uh, 10 days before liberation. So uh, it came about 50% got to Buchwald. And to compare to Auschwitz, it was a holiday because three days after they were occupied by, by American soldiers with rifles. And so we were free. And uh, Am Americans, they were terrific to me. Then they found out that I am a musician also, and that I play uh, piano and piano accordion. And I played to the American soldiers uh, American things, American jazz and stuff. I knew it all from uh, uh, listening to the radio, you know. Finally tonight, the extraordinary debut last night on one of the great stages in this country, Boston Symphony Hall, when a man who survived one of the great horrors of modern civilization shared some of the music that became his lifeline during a time he wasn't sure he'd survive. The story tonight from NBC's Stephanie Gosk. Yo-Yo Ma is used to standing ovations in Boston Symphony Hall, but this one is different. The crowd is applauding the man standing next to him. At 90 years old, George Horner is the oldest musician to make his debut on Boston's famed stage. He is also a Holocaust survivor. So what would you say music means to you? Well, the music to me is life. Because if it, went, if it went off music, I wouldn't be sitting here. What advice would you give to my generation? Well, uh, try as you can to be someone so you can make the world better than when you came into it. <laughs>